All right, so let's go. I think we've made enough changes again to save our scene as a new version. So I'm going to save this as airplane version three. There we go. Now, one of the things about my plane is it still looks very boxy. And to help me visualize this a little bit more and take it out of this very boxy look, one of the things I like to do is soften my edges. They have very, very hard edges right now. Now, this actually isn't going to do anything to move the vertices around, but it is going to create a softer look. And it's going to help me see the rounded form a little bit easier. To do this, I'm going to select my model, just one side, and go to Normals, Soften Edge. And you're going to see me doing this repeatedly throughout the process as I add a new geometry to help create a softer contoured look. And I think that actually helps visualize this as a little bit softer right now. Well, to round this out from the front, this is going to be another sort of major challenge and can actually be very, very hard from the front view. You can see the sort of big difference that I have here between what's going on. Well, let's try to see what happens if I grab a selection over vertices from the center line and try and pull these up. I might be able to take these ones along the edge and pull them together. If I generally take this concept and keep running with it, the concept of taking each of my edges and pushing them in from the corner, I'm going to start to get a more rounded form. There's nothing really scientific or accurate about this, to be honest, though. And it is kind of a dangerous thing to do, because sometimes you have to come back in and really tweak out a lot of these vertices at the end. But right now, if I'm looking at trying to round out the form, which is always a helpful thing to try and approximate your model, I think it's going to be a big benefit to actually try and eyeball a lot of this. Now, when you're working along the center line, as you see me actually doing in a couple of these points, make sure that you don't actually move your vertices off of the center line. That can be a very big mistake, which is actually going to open up a hole inside your model. So be very careful that you're not freely moving these points around if you are editing along the center line. But I'm going to grab my continuous sort of corner of vertices down the model and just pull these up a little bit to help round out the form. And already I think it starts to look a little bit better. Um, it's no longer that cube which it was a second ago. And it's a lot easier to see in some regards. Well, if I go back to my side view, oops, wrong camera. If I go back to my side view, you can actually see I've tweaked this just a little bit. So in rounding it out, I might need to come in and readjust some of these values to make sure that they work correctly. So let me just push some of these down a bit. And this is the back and forth process of box modeling. Um, there's a lot of continuously looking at each of your camera views to make sure you have everything correct. And just keep working here for a second. I'll move some of these down. And again, I'm going to try and scale this back section together a bit and move that into place. I'm going to try and keep this division right where my back flap needs to be, as we kind of positioned this earlier. And see if I can flatten out these using the scale tool. This should be pretty good for what we're at so far. But one of the things I'm always looking at here is trying to make sure my lines along the interior flow in maybe not perfectly straight lines, but in generally curving lines that don't have a lot of zigzag to them. That can sometimes break up your contour, and it's really something we're not after. I think that looks pretty good. Well, I'm missing a little bit of curvature here, so I might want to add in a couple of extra divisions to get this going. One thing I might want to do is go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool, and 
cut a new edge loop right into the model to help build some of that curvature. Now I click on an edge and I drag to place its selection. It's going to be a dotted edge. And when I let go, there's my new edge loop. I can then take this new edge and bring it down. And that's going to help me round out my form. I'm going to try this as well in the lower section down here. Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop. And this is going to give me the extra vertices that I need to help me create this bottom piece, which is actually probably going to be extruded out, as we're going to see. But I want to get these extra lines in place and ready to follow that contour. I also notice now that I need to move these back up a little bit to get them to work along the bottom. And I think this is going to be pretty solid. I'm going to create one more edge loop along the back section of this fin, or this intake, I should say. And I think there we go. We've got something working pretty well. But again, we're going to walk, uh, look back in at extruding that in just a bit. Because right now, I don't think it has enough enough depth to it. Well, first things first, actually, to really get the feel of an airplane, what this is missing are wings. To create wings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a selection of faces, which seems to make sense for this extrusion. Now, let's pull this forward. Let's see if we can pull this section down. Trying to create a graceful curve across the model. And here we're going to have to bend this slowly back up. And through this back section, I think we're going to have a good area of extrusion for these wings. Now let me show you the faces that I'm looking at actually extruding outwards. I'm going to take these eight faces to extrude. And I've selected these to be extruded outwards. Now selecting them, I've just held down shift and clicked on the face centers of each point. If you want to actually see a quicker way of doing that, this is my preferred way. Sometimes, instead of selecting eight faces, if I select the three vertices in the middle, select one vertex, hold down shift, select the next vertex, and then the third vertex, I can use select, convert selection to faces, or the hotkey control F11 to automatically convert my selection into faces. And I just find that's quicker because selecting three vertices seems quicker than selecting eight faces. Then I just right click and choose the face component mode and I'm back to where I was. Well, to produce a section that's ready to make these wings coming out, I need to extrude a new selection. Now, extruding is vitally important because to make these wings, I can't just move these out. That would give me a fuselage that is also part of the wing, which might be the case on an airplane like a B-2 bomber that's, you know, essentially looks like a boomerang. But where we have a plane that has a delineated separate fuselage and separate wing, we need to have an extrusion making those areas different. I'm going to make sure under Edit Mesh that Keep Faces Together is turned on, that it's checked for this entire process. And I'm going to hit the Extrude button on the shelf, or go to Edit Mesh and choose Extrude. Once that's extruded, I can take my manipulator and start editing this. I'm actually not a big fan of the manipulator, however. And once I extrude and I see these extra face centers along these edges, these lamina faces, which you want to make sure get moved out, I'm going to hit R right away for the scale tool. Take that yellow box and scale it inwards. Once it's been scaled down a little bit, I can move it out, scale it to flatten it, and I'll have a little section with a little edge loop ready for my wings. The wings and this edge loop we're going to talk about a little bit more in our next video.